Welcome back. Are you ready for part two? We're going to do an overview globe and a glassy north arrow. Let's rock and roll. At this point, I could use a little bit of context because we're looking at a map without any labels in the middle of the ocean. So I'll insert a new map. And in this map, I'll add a simple satellite image of the Earth. A base map would work just as well. And do you notice how I have some gaps in my data and so I can see the white background showing through? Let's open the symbology panel for this. And in this tab called Mask, I can assign no data values in my image to be whatever color I want. In this case, I want it to be black instead of transparent, which looks much better. I can close this. And in my Appearance options, I really want to make this very bright and vibrant. So I'm going to take this gamma value and bump it way up to 2. And this brightness, I'll set to 5. Very bright, very bold, because it's going to be quite small. Now let's make it look like a globe. If I open up the coordinate systems for my map, I can look for the world from space. I'll choose the world from space, and let's see how this looks. This is very promising, but my area of interest is way down here. It looks like I'm at about negative 100, so 100 degrees west, and 26 degrees south, so negative 26. I'll recenter this projection. I'll go into the map properties, and I'll right click this world from space and choose copy and modify. Now instead of these default center locations, I can make them negative 100 longitude and negative 26 latitude. I'll hit save, okay, and now this flat 3D looking map is centered over my area of interest. Back to the layout. I'll insert this map frame and drop it right here. I want this to look like a discrete globe. So I'll right click and choose activate. And then with my right clicker depressed, I'll just slide up to rescale it and center it. And then I'll exit the active map. Now I do have a black border around my globe. We are not stuck with that. So I'll open up the properties for this globe and in this little paintbrush display option, there's the default outline of one pixel black. I'll just set that to zero pixels. And now I have a floating globe. We are tilted a little bit though, so how do we replicate this in my map view? Let me go back into the properties. And in the display options, there's an option for rotate. I'll just set this to a 20 degree rotation. And now my globe is tilted just a little bit. Speaking of tilted just a little bit, I should indicate some north direction in my map. So I'm going to open this resource, which I've made available to you. The URL is esriurl.com slash Nelson Styles. And I've got all sorts of ArcGIS Pro cartographic resources for you here. Glassy North Arrows sounds interesting. I'll download this. And in my project, I'll open the catalog and navigate to the styles option. I'll right click and I'll choose add style. And I'll jump to my downloads folder. There it is, Glassy North Arrows. I'll add this back in the layout. In the insert tab, I'll choose North Arrow. There they are, available to me right at the top. I'll choose, ooh, this one looks, I'll choose this simple N. And I'll drag a area for it. There is an N north arrow, nice and glassy. Now we have an indication of north. We have an overview map. Now it's time to give an indication on this globe where we're looking, our view extent. I'll insert a rectangle and I'll just simply draw this in myself. I'll zoom in for a closer look. I'll right click it, open the properties, choose symbol. I can style this just like it's a map feature, but it's just a decorative rectangle in my layout. I'll retain the stroke and make it white. And I'll give this a nice glassy gradient fill. And its pattern will be linear. And instead of discrete, it'll be continuous. So it's smooth and it'll go from white to fully transparent white. Let's see what we've got so far. I'd like to reverse that and I'm going to soften this white and make it, let's say 50% transparent to fully transparent. Now we have something that's slightly glassy looking.
I'll see you at part three, where we're going to do all sorts of vignetting, shadow hacks, reflection hacks, hack hacks. It's going to be great.